Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, today I've got a product review. It is one of my much awaited N95 reviews and it is the N95, the model is A105 by the Indiana Face Mask Company. Yeah, so first of all, I just want to thank you guys. I often try to take the time to say thank you and welcome. I do see I have some new subscribers, and thank you for those of you who've been around and are older subscribers. But more importantly, I want to thank people for reaching out to manufacturers. Some of you already know that I do this channel as a public service, and generally I just go purchase things out of my own pocket for review. Of course, it's always nice when the manufacturers or retailers will send me some samples so that I can review for you guys. And I think it's always really helpful when the viewers reach out to them and tell them about my channel. And so I really appreciate it. I know some of you guys have done that recently. And especially thank you when it comes to things like these respirators. They're extremely expensive. So thanks again. And also I want to give a thank you and a shout out to the Indiana Face Mask Company. They sent me a box, guys. I mean, I thought like one or two respirators, let me get a look at it, but they sent me a box of these. Now they also sent me a box of their level three surgical masks, the ASTM level three. And so I'm, I'm just gonna give those a mention as well. We'll talk about those. The focus of this video is really gonna be on the respirator though. Okay, so the Indiana Face Mask Company is based in, you'll never guess where, in Indiana, right here in the United States. This particular model is called the A105 particulate respirator and it is an NIOSH NIOSH approved so I did find it on the FDA.gov website and I will put a link to that below in the description box so of course the beauty of having that NIOSH approval means that this has been tested to meet a minimum standard which is 95% particulate filtration most of them when you can find the third-party testing show that they actually do better than that but they do meet at least that criteria they also meet the criteria of having a head strap so anything that I review in the way of respirators is going to have a head strap that's been so extensively studied I think a lot of these shortcuts like the KN95 and the KF94 I, I'm not going to argue with anybody who finds that they wear them and they get a good fit and a lot of that has to do with your facial shape by the way especially with those particular kinds of I'm going to call them masks not respirators uh, because they have only ear loops and according to US standards a respirator has to have a head strap so you know for me I never really found that I could get that kind of a precise fit that I need and for reasons that I stated in my prerequisite conversation I'm not going to go there uh, review those I would refer you to Aaron Collins channel I would also offer one word of caution which is that the way those tests have to do with how they fit Aaron's face you know, I personally have a very petite narrow face oh never mind my gloves guys my arthritis is acting up a little so I'm wearing my compression glove there is just quite a bit more guessing in my opinion because both the KN95 the KF94 allow for a certain amount of leak whereas the N95s by NIOSH standards don't so as you can imagine the NIOSH are going to tend to be a little more expensive or a lot more expensive depending on who you buy. So I'm really excited to tell you about my experience and introduce you to the Indiana Face Masks A105 N95 particulate respirator. Okay, so first of all, these can be purchased in a couple of places. Indiana Face Mask, I'm just going to call it IFM from here on out, has its own website and you can purchase these directly from the company's website. It is $29.95 for a box of 25 respirators. Guys, that's really cheap. So uh, usually these respirators come out to be almost, you know, $354. Usually it's a little under $4 per item. The Indiana Face Mask is also available on the Armbrust websites. So some of you might recall that a while back I reviewed the Armbrust uh, face mask, just a surgical mask. I'm going to link that video above here. They gave us a 20% off coupon code. It's not just a one-time thing. It seems to still be working, and that's Sandy20 on Armbrust. But the price is a little bit different. So the price on the Armbrust site, instead of $29.95 for the box of 25 is $39.95. So even with that 20% off, it still comes out to be a little bit cheaper buying it through the Indiana Face Mask Company. Now, in addition to that, IFM has given my viewers a coupon code of SANDY10. So again, that's not going to be an affiliate link of any kind. I don't want the bias that commissions would create. I just leverage whatever influence I have to get a better price for my viewers. So 10% off with the code SANDY10. If you do use that coupon code, it brings it to $26.96 for a box of 25 of these, which is just over a dollar per item. They do have a free ship at anything over $75. Now, if you go looking onto the FDA.gov website and you go look for the list of approved, NIOSH approved respirators, you start looking under I for Indiana face mask, you're going to come back and say, Sandy, it's not there. First of all, I'm going to try to link it, but it's under F, F, S, 
SC LLC, so it's a limited liability corporation, comma, Indiana Face Mask Company, and indeed the A105 is there. Okay, so like I said, these come individually wrapped. That's such a nice plus when you open up the box that you've got all these individually wrapped respirators. It's not like a sticky kind of thing where you can reseal it. You just have to break it open. And when you open it up, you see that it is, I'm going to try to get a really good close up, see if the camera will focus there. Um, the polypropylene, you see like those little squares waffle weave. It feels like polypropylene. I've talked about polypropylene in the past, so I'm not going to get into that weeds of polypropylene here, but that's what any N95 uh, NIOSH approved respirator is going to be made out of. It's several layers of that polypropylene. And on there, you will see the Indiana Face Mask Company. You will see a lot number. Any particular lot of these will be subject to a quality assurance. And you see it's got two elastic head straps, which it needs to have in order to have that NIOSH approval. What the head strap looks like is a very thin elastic. I'm going to try to get a good close up so you can see, I don't know if you can see the lines, like the striations in there. It's pretty soft. It's not something that's really thick where this kind of stuff gets irritating. It really is pretty soft, but it is just one thin piece of elastic. Same thing with the other strap, exactly the same. There is a nose piece in this. Now I'm going to try to get a good picture of that so you can see how far out the nose piece is because it's inside where you see those little perforations that's the outline of the nose piece you know let's just have a sidebar because in the prerequisite conversation that I had about face piece respirators versus masks I got one comment that you know really resonated with me where somebody said I think you understate the leak when it comes to a mask and then you tend to overstate the leak when it comes to a respirator and I thought about it I thought you know I guess that's true and really that that's on purpose and I guess it's because I think that people sort of expect a certain amount of leak with masks and we always talk about leak with masks and then I'm afraid that when it, you go to a respirator people think there's something magic about a respirator where you know this is better than a mask and it does filter at the particulate level that it says and it's it's not going to leak like people don't think about that because of this i don't know if it's because there's something about nioh approval that makes this seem like it's it, it is very standardized but i i'm very concerned that people will move to this thinking that it is a de facto improvement over any mask and that's just not necessarily true the medium certainly needs a certain standard so that it can filter the particle size that it says it does and usually better but it's all about the fit after that, and I'm always afraid that people are going to overlook that. So I, it's possible that I do overstate the potential for leak and how important it is to make sure that you have a good fit with a respirator because otherwise you're not getting anywhere near the filtration that you think you are because this being the medium that it is, is going to create a lot of resistance. And so air is going to take the path of least resistance. Okay, so the proper way to put this on is really with the top head strap first and you leave this bottom head strap hanging down and let this lay over the outside because the first thing I like to do is sort of fix the nose piece as best I can and then you pull the top strap and I find it's best to leave it pretty high up you can always bring it back a little bit I leave it pretty high because that's what really gives you a more of ability to custom fit is that you have some upward pull, not only backward pull. From there, I like to adjust the nose piece. Now, the nose piece comes out to, I'd say, not quite the outer corner of my iris. But that's the blue part of my eyes. You know, I've, I've said on my channel before, ideally for me, I personally have this unique problem that not many people share. I have very deep set eyes. So this is kind of a deep cavity in here. And when I have a wider nose piece, I can push against my nose and then curve the nose piece all the way out to contour my chin and get like a tighter, more custom fit. It is hard to do that with a shorter nose piece. Now, this isn't one of the shortest nose pieces I've ever dealt with, and it's probably one of the longer ones for an N95, but it is a shortcoming. And that's why I have stated before that depending on the fit you get, there are masks that might fit you better. And if they have the specs, meaning the right medium, might actually filter better for you depending on your facial shape. So I do great with the DNA mask. Now, a lot of people complain that that one is a little scratchy. I agree, it's thick, it's hot, it's scratchy. This, not so much. But I am going to have to be very careful here and work with this nose piece and try to get a lot of tension going this way so that I can get this area filled in. So once you think you have that set, you take the bottom strap and you bring it all the way around. If it tends to be loose, this one is not so much on me. You can also bring this one up. You can even cross them 
and get a better fit down below. The, the bottom one is last and you can see how you like it. So I've got it up right now. I can leave it down. It doesn't seem to make a difference in um, the fit for me. So one of the things you can do when you first get an N95 on is, I'm going to have to take my gloves off for this, is get your hands all the way around. Now you don't want to be pressing. Take a deep breath and exhale and see if you see any of the exhalant coming out. So I'm actually going to bring this down because I do feel a little coming out around my nose, which is not a surprise. So I try to get a better fit here. And sometimes I get the better fit by actually raising it up along the nose. So yeah, I think I think that's better actually. And I don't feel it anymore. So in my case, I just moved it up. You have to be a little bit patient and you've got to be willing to sort of play with these a little bit, but it is going to be super important that you do a fit test like I just showed you. Another good form of a fit test is to use your safety goggles or glasses and see if you're getting any fog. Now, I don't mean the kind of fog you'd get if you go from inside outside into a freezing cold environment. That's just a temperature change thing. But fog that comes and goes and comes and goes every time you exhale, that's a leak. Okay, so I'm gonna put my safety goggles on. Now, I put mine outside this strap. Uh, you just wanna make sure you're not disrupting the fit. Again, the fit is just going to be so important with these. So just make sure if you put glasses on and off, you know, even if you tug at this strap the slightest bit, you might be disrupting a very precise fit. So I go ahead and put it on top of the strap. So let's look for any fog here. And it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm not seeing any fog. So I definitely got a good fit here. I've definitely got a nice seal. I also don't feel anything. Exhaled air that's leaking will feel cool around your skin. I really like what I'm seeing actually. But, you know, I have some experience with these, so I don't want to make it look too easy. Uh, you know, with me, it was a matter of pulling it up higher on my nose and getting this concavity filled in. I would suggest that if you're new to wearing something like this, that if you're going to wear it out somewhere, like let's say you have somewhere to go that you think is maybe high risk, you're indoors with a lot of people, and you want this extra protection that you get with the aerosol coverage, I would recommend putting it on in the house. I know these are expensive and you don't really want to like waste one, but I think it's going to be wasted and a lot of worry if you get somewhere and you're kind of feeling like you have to fidget with it because you shouldn't be having to touch it. So I would recommend using it at home first and just make sure as you move your head around, you know, it's possible that you don't fog like this, but then when you lean down to read, you realize that you do. So just make sure that you, you know, just get used to it in a setting where you're home and safe and you can kind of be taking it on and off and, you know, adjusting it as you need to before you go out somewhere and wear it where you need it to be performing. Already, for you, I actually I'm had to go to the optometrist and I thought that was going to be a, a good opportunity to test it. We're like right up close to each other. Nowadays, they have that plexiglass in between the slit lamp and the patient. But, you know, you're still really close. And my guess is he's still leaking some in his mask and, you know, other people are in and out of the room. So, um, I was able to do all those different tests, like I have that test on the visual field where you have to click when you see dots in your peripheral vision, and for that one you have to be right up against the machine on a chin bar. And I did another one where they take a picture of my retina and I have to be right up against the machine with the side of my cheekbone. And all of these things were like a perfect opportunity to disrupt the fit. Now I had something else in my purse in case this wasn't going to work out, but I thought it would be a really good test that I could tell you guys how I performed with it and how it performed for me. And I have to say it was perfect. I didn't have a single episode where I had to remove it or adjust it or, you know, ask them, oh, wait a second, I can't see what I'm supposed to look at because it's fogging because I moved it. Pressure here, pressure on the chin bar, um, even moving right up to the slit lamp where you put your chin in the bar. It did not disrupt this fit and it did not cause any fogging. Now, there were times where maybe if conceivably I wouldn't have known because at some points I didn't have glasses on, but most of the time when I was up next to a machine, I was next to some kind of a lens or some kind of a window that I had to look at or, you know, look around or hold still. And I, I'm sure that I would have fogged up that. And I'm sure that I would have started to feel 
um, some of the disruption. I will continue to wear this for that kind of a setting because now I, I feel like it's been subjected to a lot of scrutiny. Now it's not ever going to be wicking, okay? These are warm by definition because it's polypropylene through and through and so it is going to feel warm in there. And you are going to feel um, some of the labor of breathing, particularly if you have to like go up and down stairs or something. You might just be more aware than you are on other when you're not wearing something like this. One thing that is nicer, however, it is perfectly smooth. Okay, so this is like as soft and smooth as it can be. It's polypropylene, which feels like, you know, not quite like paper, not quite like fabric. It sort of feels like something in between. It is a non-woven, just like a surgical mask. But it is a very nice smooth one, and I don't feel like it's scratchy or anything. It's for people who have complained about the DNA being a little bit scratchy. I, I will agree, it is a thick, bulky, scratchy mask, although I think it is a fantastic mask and it definitely rivals an N95 if you get the fit right. And same thing with an N95, you have to get the fit right. As long as you can get a good fit with this one, I think you'll find it's uh, smooth and non-scratchy. Oh, I was thinking about like testing. There's not that much testing I can do that tells us anything. Unfortunately, we have that NIOSH approval, which means that it's been really tested in some sort of better conditions than I have here. But I do want to just show you the water uh, test, just how water resistant it is. Now, I, I'm going to take issue with one thing that Aaron Collins had said on his channel where he put a, an N95 into a glass and he poured some water into the N95 and then he let the glass sit. And he didn't say how much time went by, but I'm sure it was like hours and ultimately the water went to the other side. And that is expected. He's right. You know, the mask isn't completely watertight. Polypropylene will slow the water. Okay, polypropylene isn't completely watertight. I think we've seen where I've shown some masks, all different ones where I cut open on my channel like a long time ago. And we saw that some polypropylene on the inside, the water went through pretty quickly and other ones it was delayed and it, through the end of the video, it still wasn't wet on the other side. That doesn't mean it won't be after hours and hours. So I, I do think it means something because I like to see that that fluid is slowed. Now, anything that's gonna meet the NIOSH standards is going to do that, but just to show you, I'm gonna pour the better part of a glass of water here. Oops, it's spilling. And I don't know if I can show you without spilling, but there's a big puddle of water now in this. And the outside is completely dry. So let me see if I'm able to show you on camera that pours out into, I have a glass here underneath. And that outside is completely dry. And even the inside, now you see my lipstick, but the, there's some drops came out. It, it tends to beat up, roll off. It feels the slightest bit, like I feel the temperature difference because there's some moisture on the surface. So again, this isn't going to be moisture wicking like with some of the masks we looked at. All of the masks we looked at, my mask criteria included some moisture wicking on the inside layer and the polypropylene was in the middle. So this isn't going to have that. And that's why you do feel some heat and some moisture buildup when you're using an N95. Yeah, so I, this feels like a kind of a very easy review for me in some ways because up until now, reviewing all these different face masks and having to see if they meet my criteria and see how they perform with that criteria uh, that's a whole lot of work, but the NIOSH approval really takes care of a lot of things like that, and a lot of things about it are very standardized, and it becomes more about how does it fit and how does it feel. So for me, I find that this does fit uh, quite well. I'm happy I'm able to attain a good fit without leak, especially with that concavity I have with my deep set eyes. Now, I do find that with all the different factors I look at with masks, fogging seems to be the most individualized, and I'm only batting about 500. So when I say something fogs on me, other people will say, oh, this doesn't fog at all and vice versa. And I think it has a lot to do with the weight of your glasses, the shape of your glasses, the shape of your face and etc. So the only thing I would say that I would enjoy more is maybe if this did have a wider uh, nose piece, if, if the nose piece came like all the way out to the periphery here and I could get a little more contour around my cheekbone and make sure that stays put. That said, I am going to look forward to continuing to wear these and I just want to Thank the people at the Indiana Face Mask Company so much for their help and for sending me these so that I could review them. And thank you also for the coupon codes for my viewers. So like I said, those are not any kind of a commission affiliate link for me. I just like to leverage whatever I can. And at a price as competitive as these are, giving us an extra 10% off was just very generous. And thank you again for that. So in addition, just because IFM was kind enough to send me the surgical masks, I just thought I would give these a mention as well and take a look at them. 
So when you open up the box, it's 25 surgical masks, and they're in this one Ziploc bag. I thought it was nice that they're in like a thick Ziploc. And like I've said before, I think it was with the armbrust mask, when you take one of these out, I would recommend that you make sure you're pulling by the body of the mask. Don't like pull something by the ear loop because the ear loops aren't super sturdy with these and you, know, you could conceivably just break that off and then you're kind of out a mask. One of the things people always say is, well, how do you know the inside from the outside? And I always say, well, the color is on the outside. In this case, it being that it's all white, well, how do you know? Well. Typically, you have the pleats, like the top here is where the nose piece is. So if that's the top, you have the pleats, so they're facing down. See, so I can put my finger up into those pockets, and this would be the outside. Also, you can see that the ear loop is actually a, attached to this side, not to this side of the mask. So the ear loop would be attached typically on the outside. So I'm going to treat this as the outside, and, you know, I've said before, these actually create a lot of leak. I've shown a trick before that you can use to get a lot better fit on a surgical mask so that it isn't leaking. And I think with that fit or with a device like Fix the Mask, a Fix the Mask device will bring a surgical mask as long as it's an ASTM3 like this is. That means it's fluid resistant up to 160 millimeters of mercury. That's the highest designation there is. Uh, if you put something like a Fix the Mask device over this, you will get performance that's closer to an N95. And without something like that, I would recommend using the trick I've shown. I'm gonna link the video here. It's sort of a simple trick where you have a little bit of folding and tying and tucking so that you get rid of the leak here and it becomes a much smaller mask with the ear loops. It will start to kind of fatigue the area behind your ears after a while, but that's just a trade-off. Um, some people like to put these underneath a fabric mask. I don't have a quarrel with that as long as you're getting a good fit. I, these have sort of limited use these days. I mean, this is the kind of thing I've worn in the operating room for years, although they tend to have ties. So I tie one like up above here, way high on my head. Some people use this kind with ear loops in the operating room. I, I found myself over the years grabbing for the kind that I could tie. Uh, but that said, this does have a nice long nose piece, so I can get a good contour here as long as I'm going to enhance the fit in one of the other ways that I described. I do like that they have a nice little diagram on the side of the box, not that with some people it's going to help because, you know, this whole, this thing, like wearing the mask down under the nose, you know, like this and this, that's a big don't. I think anybody who watches my channel already knows that. I do think as surgical masks go, these are perfectly nice and I want to thank the folks at IFM for sending these as well and letting me try those out. So I have at least one more N95 that I'm going to review very shortly, so let me know if this was helpful and until next time, be well. Bye-bye.